Hello, Algebra 1. Today, we're going to look at uh, section 6.7, which is graph and compare exponential functions. And exponential functions are pretty awesome. It turns out that things in nature, uh, they grow exponentially, uh, not, not linearly, usually. And so these are, these are really useful. It's pretty cool. Well, um, our, some vocabulary we have is, uh, first things first, an exponential function is a function in the form of y equals a times b to the x. Notice your, ex, your, your variable is the exponent, which is kind of cool. Now, um, they, there are some limitations here, and basically these limitations you don't need to worry about because what happens is if, if you were any of these things, it would not be an exponential function. It would just kind of mess up. But uh, you're going to have an A value. It can't be zero because that would wipe everything out. Uh, B is going to you know, need to be greater than zero because then if you didn't have, if it was negative, it would mess things up greatly. Um, and also B can't be one because if it's one, it's never going to grow. Okay. So w what's the cool thing about exponential functions is it it's repeated multiplication. And so if you kind of think about that, um, it, it might help you as we go along with these. Now, um, to be exponential growth, um, it talks about a having to be greater than zero. That's not actually true. Um, I, I would like for you to, to mark that out. Uh, but the B value, if the B value is greater than 1 in this function, then it's going to be exponential growth. If the B value is greater than 1. Now, for exponential decay, again, the A, it doesn't matter. The A could be negative. If it, it would, could still be growth versus decay. But for exponential decay, um, what's going to happen is the B is going to be a decimal or a fraction. It's going to be between 0 and 1. And what that happens is, is that's repeated multiplication by a fraction, and it makes things smaller. So that's why it's called decay. Bigger than 1, it's growth. And that makes sense because, you know, if you're multiplying by 2 each time, that's going to grow it. Uh, but if it's between 0 and 1, you're multiplying by a fraction, which is making it smaller. It's, it's dividing it. Um, and so you've got a couple examples here. What's kind of cool is um, you're going to see when we graph these, um, the the number out front is like your starting amount. If you're doing like a word problem or a real life application, it's your starting amount. So you have two of these things, three of these things. And then the, the B value, that's going to be your growth factor or your decay factor. Okay, so that's kind of how these are set up. Um, Let's go ahead and jump in. How we're going to graph these is um, we're just going to make a table of values, okay? And, and so they've got some instructions here. We're also going to talk about domain and range. We're also going to get a new vocabulary word that uh, we're going to need to write down here somewhere. So uh, to graph these, let's make a table. Let's go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And you're just going to plug them in. So 2 to the negative 2 power. You could use a calculator and punch that in. You could totally do that. But you could also do your properties of exponents. Negative exponents are going to move it down, and you're going to square it. You're going to get 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1, you're going to move it down. It's going to become 1 half. 2 to the 0, do you remember what anything to the 0 power is? That's right. It's 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2. 2 to the second is 4. And then we just plot these points. So negative 2 up a fourth. Not up a whole lot. Negative 1 a half. 0, 1. 1, 2, 2, 4. Now what, you want, what I want you to notice is these are, this is not a linear relationship. It's curving. And what's going to happen is, is it's going to continue to get steeper as you go to the right. It's going to continue curving upward. Now what's interesting is on the left, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. But you know what it's not going to do? It's never going to cross 
the x-axis. The x-axis is called an asymptote. And an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches more and more closely, but never crosses, okay? So exponential graphs have asymptotes. And what makes a, make that, uh, why that's significant is when we talk about domain and range, um, it's gonna help kind of in, inform our, our domain and, and range. Uh, your domain, you can use any X's you want. So you can say uh, all real numbers. Uh, there's no restrictions on what you can use for, for X values. But notice your, your range, your Y values, they're never going to be negative. They're never going to be zero. It's never going to get to zero. But it goes the other direction forever. So you can go Y is greater than zero. Not equal to zero because the asymptote is at that zero. You're never going to get there, which is kind of cool. All right, was this growth or decay? Well, um, be careful. You know, yeah, it looks like it's getting it's getting bigger, it's going up. But go ahead and double check. Our B value was two, which is bigger than one, so it's growth. Uh, this is kind of like a parent graph. It's kind of the most basic exponential function you can kind of think of. Um, example two. Let's graph, oh, I've got some stuff in the way here. Let me move that out of the way. That helps a little bit. There we go. Um, so for our next one, we've got uh, um, an exponential function that has a one-half for our B value. And one-half is between 0 and 1. This is going to be a decay function, so we're going to see how how these how this differs. Um, and let's uh, yeah, same stuff. Um, so no change in how we do this: negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. I'm not going to grab a calculator just yet again, because what I'm going to think of is. Negative exponent makes it the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of one half is two, and then I square it, I get four. Reciprocal is two. A half to the zero power is one. A half to the first power is one half. And a half squared is one fourth. You're welcome to grab a calculator, but eh. I think it's better to think about those properties of exponents and try it in your head. From there, we graph it. Negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 2. 0, 1. 1, a half. 2, a quarter. And what's interesting is on this one, as you go to the left it's going to get steeper and steeper. And as you go to the right, it's gonna get smaller and smaller, but guess what? It's never going to cross. It's never gonna cross the x-axis. That's our asymptote. So notice the difference between um, growth functions and decay functions. Um, yeah, they, they, one's, one's getting less, it's cutting the values down, it's multiplying by a half each time, which makes things smaller, so it's uh, cutting things down, whereas the other one was multiplying by two each time, making it bigger. Uh, the domain for this is still all real numbers. You can use any x's you want. And the range is still y is greater than zero can't be zero because the asymptote and this was an example of decay so example three is going to be graphing and comparing an exponential function so let's flip it over see what we got they want us to graph 
the function y equals 3x and y equals 1 third times 3 to the x on the same graph and compare the two graphs. And they're going to ask what are the domains and ranges of each graph. All right, so here's, here's where it gets interesting. Um, y equals 3 to the x, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Don't even think about it. Just, just punch those numbers in. Um, 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 1, 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 3 to the second. Flip it and square it, 1 ninth. Flip it, 1 third. Anything to 0 power, 3, 9. And we can graph that one out. Negative 2 up a ninth. It's tiny, isn't it? I don't even know. It's just a little bit above the, the x-axis, isn't it? Negative 1 up a third. Um, 0 up 1. 1 up 3. 2 up 9. And make it a nice curve shape. Oh, uh, yeah, make sure to put arrows on both ends. It goes on forever like, like lines do. Now, they also want us to graph. I should probably grab a different color. Um, I'll just try to, to make it look different, maybe. But what they also wanted us to graph, one-third times three to the x power. Well, um, still use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. But it's a little more complicated. Um, actually, I'll give you a heads up. The only difference is we're taking the values we got earlier and multiplying up here in this other table and multiplying those values by a third. So the 3 to the negative 2, that's going to be 1 ninth. And 1 ninth times a third, 1 ninth times a third, you can use calculator if you need to, but 1 ninth times a third is going to be 1 27th. That's tiny, 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 tiny. Uh, one third times three to the negative one. Well, three to the negative one is one third. One third times one third is one ninth. One third times three to zero. Anything to zero power is one, but then we multiply by the one third. So we're at one third. And one third times three to the first. So 3 to the first is 3 times 1 third is 1. 1 third times 3 squared. And 3 squared is 9 times a third is 3. So let's plot these points and see how it differs from our, our previous graph. So this was 3 to the x. Um, now we're going to graph this next one. So negative 2, 1 27th. That's super tiny. It's smaller than it was earlier. One ninth, super tiny. One third. One. And two, three. So here's our other graph. It's going to be... I probably should have made that a little more curve. I think if I put three in there, it'd be 20. Three would have been nine. So it actually hits... Let me, let me fix that real quick. It would actually hit right here. So it starts to curve up, yeah. So this was one third times three to the X. Well, um, what we've learned in, in previous sections this year is that the number in front can be a vertical stretch or shrink. So that one third what it did was it shrunk these values by a third. It shrunk them down. So that, that's what was going on. Um, so one third times three to the X was a vertical shrink. A vertical shrink of 
three to the X. So that's what was going on there. That's what changing that number out front does. If you made it, you know, a three out front, that would be a vertical stretch. It would multiply things, stretch things out by a factor of three. Um, but this was a vertical shrink. Now notice our domain on, on both of these is all real numbers. And our range is, again, y is greater than 0. It'll get right up next to 0, but it won't become 0. So it's everything above, yeah, on both of these. Okay, so I got to tell you, there's not much new on this last one. I'll let you guys uh, finish it up, and you can check the, the worked out notes to, to check um, your answers here. But the video is getting a little bit long, so I want to wrap it up pretty quick. But just to give you a heads up, um, the, this is going to be, uh, growth or decay. That's right. It's going to be decay. Okay. If the base is, uh, between zero and one, it's going to be decay, but we're going to have a vertical stretch of a decay function. So you can see what that, what that looks like as, as well. Um, so, and you, you'll have your, your domains and ranges to, to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it short. You can look over. I would like for you to do this on your own and then just click on the, the worked out notes to, to check uh, your answers. And yeah, have a great uh, day.